Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you. We're trying to get this lightning right. Hallelujah. Good morning. Can you hear the music? I'm going to get this together over here. Praise God. I'm doing a couple of things at one time. Praise God. Good morning. God bless you, everybody. God bless those that are joining us for the first time. Amen. Today is a rest day for the team. Hallelujah. And because it's a rest day, God bless you. God bless you, my sister. Amen. Because it is a rest day today for the team, we are doing our um, Facebook Live, amen, from here. So everyone is resting today. But I'm telling you, I got something I want to share with everyone today. Praise God. Okay, I'm thinking what I'm trying to do is probably not going to work over here. But I pulled up an old song. Let me put this on the speaker so y'all can hear this. I pulled up an old song. Hallelujah. Because I need y'all to hear this old song. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. I had to pull up this old song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know we need the anointing of the Lord today? Amen. Glory to God. We want the anointing of the Lord to fall. Glory, glory, glory. Yes, Jesus. Good morning and God bless you. And we want to thank God for you joining us this morning. Amen. Here on Sodan Globals. Amen. Our cyber church. And for those of you that are on the other page and I haven't have not been on this page and have not been streaming off of here. But however, we wanted to be able to share the word with y'all today. So can you just listen to this worship and just give God some glory on this morning? Hallelujah, Jesus, we bless your name. We give you praise, God. We give you glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Can you just worship him this morning wherever you are? Hallelujah. And can you share this stream? There may be somebody who cannot get to church today. Can you share this stream? Can you, amen, click share and pass this on so that somebody else be blessed by the word today? Amen. We're coming for every person that has been going through, every person that has been dealing with turmoil, every person, amen, that the enemy has been coming against you and trying to steal your peace. We are going to release the power of the peace of God on this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we honor your name. Yes, God, we give you all power. We give you all glory. We magnify your name, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God, we magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Come on, we wait on the Lord this morning. Can you wait on him and worship? Can you wait on him and give him glory? Can you wait on him and magnify him this morning? Can you wait on him and give him praise and thanksgiving? Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to 
gonna get to the word, but can you just worship for a minute? Can you just give God praise? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We'll give you praise today, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we bless your name. We wait on you, Jesus. We wait on you, Jesus. We wait on you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Yes. How many of you need the fire of God? Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you praise, God. We give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Can you just give God praise this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. We want to just go ahead and give God worship and honor. Amen. We want to magnify the Lord this morning. Amen. Because we know that we're just waiting on God. We need God. We don't need anything else. We need God. And a lot of times we put all of these other things in place thinking that if I just had a best friend, if I just had, you know what I'm saying, somebody to talk to, if I just had more friends, if I just had somewhere to go, if I just had a better car, if I just had more family, if I just had somebody who understood me, uh-uh. All we need is the presence of God. We need to put God back in the place, amen, that he belongs in our life, amen, which is the head of our life. Glory to God. We bless the Lord today, amen, and praise God for each of you, amen, hallelujah, that are joining us today, hallelujah, amen, and we just thank the Lord, amen, for just allowing us to come together on today, amen, for those of you that's joining us for the first time, amen, we want to thank God for you, amen, and we are going to get into the word this morning, amen, the Lord has just been speaking to my heart, amen, even as I was in prayer, and just even looking over the word of God, God began to speak to me, amen, about just um, speaking a word, Praise God that is going to bring healing, speaking a word that's going to bring deliverance. Amen. And so I want to be able to share with you the word of God on today. I don't care where you are, if you're at work, if you're at home, if you're laying in the bed and you just felt like, you know what I'm saying, I'm just, I'm just tired. I need to, you know, just rest for today. Well, good. Let this word minister to you right where you are. Amen. We're going to pray. Amen. And we're going to go ahead and get into the word of God. Father, we just thank you for every person, God, that's under the sound of my voice. Every person that is watching live on today. Every person that's listening, God, on iHeartRadio over Spreaker. And Father, we just ask you today that you would send your word with power, with authority, that you bring healing, that you bring deliverance, that you would bring salvation in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it right now. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So I want you to get your Bibles. Amen. And we're going to the word of God. Hallelujah. And we're going to praise God, the book of Philippians first. Amen. We're going to go to Philippians and then we're going to go, amen, to a couple of other verses of scripture. Amen. And so we're going to first, we're going to go to the book of Philippians. We're going to chapter four. So get your Bibles. Amen. Or, or you can listen while we go along, but I would prefer that you get your Bible. Amen. So that we can read together. And so that you can see that what I'm telling you, amen, is in the scripture. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
All right, so let's get our Bibles and go to the Word. We're going to Philippians, amen, the fourth chapter. Praise God. All right, and I have quite a few verses of Scripture for you, amen, and I'm praying that you have you a pen and a paper, all right, so you can write this down so that you can go back and listen later if you, if you need to. Praise the Lord, because I'm telling you this word is going to speak to your heart today. I believe God that this word is going to speak to your heart today. Amen. We need, we need to hear a word that's going to speak to us, that's going to bring deliverance, that's going to bring healing. All right. And so we're going to allow God's word to do what it does. Praise God. All right. Philippians chapter four. And we're going to start at the fourth verse. I don't know why my Bible decides it wants to go to another chapter. Praise the Lord. So here's my, my Bible wants to go where it wants to go today. Amen. One second. Let's get this right. All right. Chapter four. And we're going to start at verse four. And I'm going to read a couple of verses from here. Philippians four. And we're going to start at verse four. Those of you that are watching it, it's in my, I'm in my office. So I kind of got things behind me. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a busy space. Hallelujah. But I want you to look at everything else. I want you to get your mind and your eyes on the word of God. Amen. Because that's what's going to bring deliverance in your life today. Praise the Lord. All right. Philippians chapter four. Amen. We're going to start at verse four and read down to verse nine. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. And those of you that's listening, amen, and reading, I'm reading from the ESV. All right. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. All right. Verse seven, it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses your requests. Amen. Oh, excuse me. Surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for the word of the Lord. Praise God. All right, so here is, amen, Paul, and he's talking to the Philippian church, amen, and I really want us to pay attention to what he is saying. He's telling them, number one, rejoice in the Lord always. I'm going to tell you something. There are things that take place in life that you're not going to always want to rejoice about. There are things, amen, that will take place that will make you want to cry, okay, and he understands this. But he's trying to, amen, help the people of God not to have their eyes fixed on circumstances that they see. We are a people that, you know, we're visual. That's why video works. That's why graphics work. That's why movies work. That's why TV, you know what I'm saying, is it, it works and is, pop, is, is popular as it is, you know. And so you have to understand that you have got to be able to shift the way that you think, shift the way that you see things. And begin to understand that it does not matter what it is that you are facing, what it is that you are going through, what it is, amen, that people might be saying, whatever it is that you are facing, he said, rejoice in the Lord always. Now today, amen, I want to share with you about the power of the peace of God, because we live in a world today, amen, that we are finding ourselves overstimulated. There's so much stuff going on. Amen. And, you know, um, we are always, you know, having to go here, having to go there. I got this to do. I got that to do. I have this appointment. I have that appointment, you know, and then I got stuff going on at home and things happening with my children and things taking place on the job. And then I have extracurricular stuff that's going on. Hallelujah. And all these things that are, that we are dealing with. Amen. Hallelujah. It sometimes comes to steal our peace and comes to steal our ability to rejoice in the midst of whatever it is that we're facing. Now for us, it is easy for us to worship God, to give God praise and to rejoice when everything is going well. When, when all my bills are paid, you know what I'm saying? When the kids are acting right, when your wife is acting right or your husband is acting right, you know what I'm saying? All of those things, amen, you feel good when it is, you know, 
when, when there's nothing else going on around you. Hallelujah. But, but can you still rejoice when all hell is breaking loose? And I'm going to tell you today, amen, really why there is power in the peace of God. We're not talking about peace that you get, praise God, from taking tranquilizers. All right. That's a different kind of peace. You know what I'm saying? This is the kind of peace that comes from the presence of the Lord. And because we are so busy and because we have so much going on and because we are such self-help people, you know what I'm saying? We like to do stuff ourselves. I know how to get this done. I don't need no help. I know how to make this work. I know how to, you know what I'm saying, keep things going. And because this is our mentality, we do not allow ourselves to really experience the peace of God. All right, so let's go back to the scripture because I want to make sure that I stay on point and, and, and I'm going to be timing myself. Hallelujah. So, you know, those of you that's on the team, amen, hallelujah, and I, and I do have my thing on here, but I want you to hit me up when we hit that 45-minute mark. Okay, let's go back to Philippians, amen, chapter 4 again. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. I'm telling you more than once because, honey, I'm, there are things that are going to come into your life that you're going to experience, amen, and you are they're not going to always be pretty. They're not going to always be things that make you want to smile. They're not going to always be things that make you want to clap your hands and lift up your hands and worship God. They're not always going to be things, amen, that make you smile, amen. And so he's telling them, I need you to understand in this rejoice in the Lord always and again I'm telling you to rejoice amen he said let your reasonableness be known to everyone the Lord is at hand and here's verse 6 this is what I want to I want to look really at verse 6 he says do not be anxious about anything I want to pause do not be anxious about anything. Now, before I even read any further, I want you to take a look back at just what your week has been like. What have you been obsessing over all week long? What is it that has had your mind in a vice all week long. What have you been anxious about? What have you been worrying about? What is it that you've been concerned about thinking that God is not going to do what he said he's going to do? Come on. Amen. You know that there are times, amen, where things come on, come in your life, amen, and get a hold of you and you just can't seem to get your mind off of it and it makes you anxious. Amen. This word anxious means, amen, to be solicitous, to expend careful thought, to concern oneself, to have one's thoughts occupied. What has your mind been occupied about all week long? That you just can't, when you try to stop thinking about it, your mind comes back to it. When you try to put your mind on something else, your mind starts thinking about this thing again. When you're trying to have a good time, you're laughing and joking when you're around everybody else. But as soon as you get to yourself, here come those anxious thoughts. Here come those things that come to occupy your mind and take up space. Amen. And rent out residence in your mind and in your head space. What is it that you have been giving your thoughts to? all week long all right and here's the other word it says to be solicitous if you are anxious what we start doing is we start trying to find a way to get out how do i fix this how do i make this right it's got to be somebody that i can get in touch with that can make this right it's got to be somebody that i can talk to that amen that can make this right it's got to be somebody amen that knows how to get me out of this who do I know? Who's in my list? Who's on my, who's in my friends list? Who's on my, who's, who's in my uh, contacts in my phone? Who can I call that can help me get through this situation? That's what anxiety does to you. Makes you, amen, try to find your own way out. What have you been trying to find your own way out of? And I know some of you on this here stream right here, you mighty silent, but I know this word is speaking to you. Hallelujah. I know, amen, that we all have gone through circumstances and situations and have experienced things, amen, that have caused our mind to be preoccupied with things and we cannot hear what God is saying. Why? Because our minds, amen, are full of thoughts. Amen. To be concerned, to concern oneself, to have the thoughts occupied with. What is your mind preoccupied with? And you know what it is. You know.
know what it is that you face. You know what it is that you have been going through. Amen. And you just can't get your mind off it. Maybe somebody passed away and you can't get that off your mind. Maybe, amen, there's things going on in your home today and you don't know how to get over it and you can't get that off your mind. Maybe your children are not saved and they out here ripping and running in the street and you don't know where they are and you know you're worried about something going to happen to them and you just can't get that off of your mind. Maybe, amen, there's issues and things going on, praise God, on your job and you don't know, amen, whether you're going to have a job on Monday when you go in and maybe people are getting laid off and your mind is preoccupied with is this going to work out? Can God fix this? Is God going to fix this on my behalf? You're anxious about all of these things. And the scripture is telling us, do not be anxious about anything, anything, nothing, not your house, not your job, not your family, not your, amen, your, your, your possessions, not your health. Don't be anxious about anything. When you trust God, you can't walk in trust and anxiety at the same time. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The Lord deliver me from the spirit of anxiety. So I know years and years and years ago when my spirit was all jacked up before I got saved. Praise God. And amen. I didn't have no peace in the morning. I didn't have no peace at night. I had to take pills. To, amen. To help me to stay calm. Amen. To help me to keep my mind. Amen. Right. Praise God. I know what that's like. But here we come over here in Christ and we get delivered from that stuff. And then we start opening doors to anxiety again because we don't want to trust God. We want to be able to have everything in our hands. We want to be able to control every circumstance, every situation. Come on here. Amen. I want to be able to know where everybody is every hour on the hour. I want to be able to put my hands on it. I want to be able to know all my money is right. I want to be able to know, amen, praise God, that all my bills are going to be paid. I want to be able to know that there's no sickness or no disease that's going to come upon me. I want to make sure that everything is right. Listen to me. You cannot focus on those things. You got to learn how to rest in God. We got to learn how to rest in God. Tell yourself that. Lay hands on yourself. You don't need nobody else to lay hands on you. You take your holy sanctified hands and lay them on yourself and tell peace to be still. And stop worrying about the things that you don't have no control over. God is in control. If God orders your steps, and we always say, and you know, this is one of my favorite verses. We say that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Well, do you really believe that? Do you really believe that? Because that means that even in your delays, you're being ordered. God is ordering your steps by God, not by man. Somebody might think that they passed you over, but God allowed it. Somebody might think, amen, that they're the ones opening the door for you, but it's God that allows it. Somebody else might think, amen, praise God, that they have the ability to stop your progress. But listen to me, the only people, amen, that have the only one that has power to stop your progress is God. Hello, unless you yourself get in the way. So we got to stop giving so much credit to other people. And for God's sake, stop giving so much attention and credit to the devil. Everything is not the devil. Some things, now you notice here when, when Paul is talking to the Philippian church, he didn't say, and plead the blood and rebuke the devil. He didn't say that. He's telling them, this is your responsibility. Don't be anxious about anything. This is your responsibility. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I'm telling you to rejoice. You may not be able to see the end from the beginning, but you serve a God. Hallelujah. That knows how to see the end from the beginning. And not only does he know how, he does see the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. So what are you worrying about? And the scripture tells us how many of us with just worrying can change or add hairs to our head. You can't, you can't add no more hair to your head. You can't change how tall you are or how short you are based on your, your worrying. So put your trust in God. Rest in the Lord. Put your, put your, put your troubles, amen, lay and cast all your cares at his feet. All right, come on, let's keep reading. 
So he says, do not be solicitous. Do not be anxious. Do not be comforted about with having all these concerns in your mind about everything, but in everything, not some things, not one thing, not this one. And then not that one. Listen to me. He said in everything, everything by prayer and supplication with Thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Why am I praising God while I'm giving him my request? Because I know that he is a God that is well able. I'm praising him because I know that he's going to do it. I'm praising him because I know that my steps are ordered by him and not by man. I'm praising him and giving thanksgiving because I'm not moved by my circumstances. And even though sometimes what I see might bring tears to my eyes and sometimes what I see might even try to make me fearful or make me apprehensive, what I got do is get my wits about me in the spirit in the Holy Ghost and I got to begin hallelujah to set my heart back on the things of God hallelujah glory to God and, and you know I'm, I'm not against self-help messages because sometimes we need that I'm not against you know what I'm saying praise God some of these people that give you 10 steps to do this and 5 steps to do that but we got to get back to the word of God your answer is in the word your answer is not in your 10 steps because you can follow those 10 steps, but unless you come through the word of God, unless you, amen, put your trust in God, all of those steps are going to fail. You can follow all those steps. Some steps are not going to bring you peace. There's one step to peace, just trusting in God. That's where your peace comes from. Your peace is not going to come from having more money, surrounding yourself by, by, by a better crowd of people. Peace is not going to come through that. Peace is not going to come, amen, just from you having, you know what I'm saying, you know, not being in a battle. You can have peace around you and not have peace in you. Can I say that again? You can have peace around you and not have peace in you. This is what we're talking about. We are focusing on the fact, amen, that you got to get this peace in your inner man. Not just outward stuff, but inward. We need an inward work done in us. We need an inward work. Hallelujah. Praise God. So back to the scripture. Amen. And then he says, praise God in the seventh verse. He says, after you do all of that, after you put your trust in God, after you stop being anxious, after you begin to rejoice and always rejoice, after you, amen, give God all of your issues, all of your supplications, all of your prayers, and you thank him for doing it. Hallelujah. After that, he says, and the peace of God. Hallelujah. If you want the peace of God, you got to do, amen, what verse 4 and 5 says before you get to verse, amen, verse 7. You got to do, amen, what verse 6 says, amen, before you get what verse 7 says. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, and the peace of God, the tranquility of God, the unity of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Amen. The author of peace is going to come in. The one who creates peace is going to take his seat in your spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Every kind of blessing in the Hebrew, that's from the word that means every kind of blessing and good. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to, I want to take a minute. Hallelujah. And I want to read you some definitions of what peace is. Okay. And, and, and so for those of you who don't have one, you need to get you a Vines dictionary. Amen. Y'all know I like to share resources. So this is a Vines expository dictionary. So those of you who can't see that, that's what that looks like. Okay. Get you one so you can study the word of God. All right. Praise God. Y'all know how I feel about studying the word. Praise the Lord. I want to give you a definition of the word peace. All right. Okay. So this word peace, amen, occurs in each of the books of the New Testament, except for first John and also, um, excuse me. And it, and it refers to being saved in first John and also in Acts chapter seven and verse 26. Okay. It is translated as peace in the reverse standard uh, version. And it describes a harmonious relationship. Now listen to this. Harmonious relationships between men. It also speaks of harmonious relationships between nations. It speaks of friendliness. And here's the thing I want you to catch right here. It is freedom from molestation. Can I read that again? Freedom from molestation. Now, in today's vernacular, the word molestation has a sexual 
connotation. But the old and dated, amen, uh, uh, definition of the word molestation has nothing to do with sexual contact. Hallelujah. Amen. This word molestation, amen, is not about sexual assault. Because if we're talking about the peace of God, amen, praise God, hallelujah, amen, it goes deeper than, amen, you going through, amen, sexual things. And I'm not diminishing, amen, anybody who's been molested. But I'm helping you understand that there's a spiritual connotation that takes place here. That what he is talking about, the peace of God, amen, hallelujah, in, in, in Philippians uh, chapter 4, when he says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, and the freedom from molestation, hallelujah, that passes all understanding, that harmony, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, that passes all understanding, what does he mean when he's saying freedom from molestation, it is the act of being pestered and harassed, hallelujah, God, glory to God, amen, it is, amen, being harassed, Amen. By someone in an aggressive and persistent manner. This is what he's talking about. He's talking about being free in your mind from harassing thoughts. He's talking about being free in your spirit. Amen. From spirits, amen, that pester you. Amen. That burden you. That annoy you. That come to bring you down and bring you out of the place of harmony with God. And not just with God, when you read this word peace, amen, it means, praise the Lord, for you to be in unity with yourself. Can I say that again? It means for you to be in unity with yourself. When you are experiencing anxiety in yourself, you don't have any peace. You don't have that harmony. You don't have that rest. Hallelujah. You don't have order. Glory to God. Because you can't get your thoughts right. Your, your, your thoughts are all over the place. Glory to God. You can't, amen, think straight. Amen. Because you're being harassed by worry. Harassed by your circumstances. Harassed about whether or not things are going to come together. Harassed about whether or not, praise God, you know what I'm saying? Things are going to start adding up finally. Glory to God. Being pestered by the thought of, is God really going to do what he said he's going to do? Is God going to bring me out? Am I ever going to get delivered? Am I ever going to be free? Are my kids ever going to be safe? Is my house ever going to be right? Am I ever going to be able to pay these bills? Am I ever going to be able to stay in a place, amen, without getting an eviction notice? Am I ever going to be able, praise God, to make my car payment on time? All of these things, Hallelujah. Am I ever going to be able to be in a place where there's order and there's rest? Come on, callers, are you there? Hallelujah. Have you ever been harassed and pestered in your mind about your circumstances? This is what Paul is talking about. This is what he's speaking about. Being pestered. He's being, amen. He's talking about being harassed. Anxiety and the lack of peace will harass you. Anxiety, amen, and the lack of the rest in God, hallelujah, will cause you, amen, to feel like you're being molested in the spirit. Where you are being constantly attacked, constantly being, amen, hallelujah, harassed, amen, and there's an aggressor coming after you, being burdensome, amen, and annoying you. Have you ever experienced that? Have you ever experienced that where you just couldn't just get things right in your head? And if you could just, if you could just shut everything down for five minutes, if you could just, just shut everybody's mouth for a few minutes. And if you could just, if you could just have peace and quiet all around you so that you're not dealing with that harassment in the spirit. This is what Paul is talking about when he says, and the peace of God. This is why you got to go to God and you got to rejoice. This is why you got to, amen, be able to let your request be made known unto him with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. This is why you got to do that. Hallelujah. You can't have peace, amen, inwardly, inwardly in your mind and in your spirit. You can't have peace if you're focusing on this harassment that you're experiencing. Callers, are you there? Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. It is to be able to have quietness. Hallelujah. Amen. It is the sense of rest and contentment. Come on here. Glory to God. Can you be content while all hell's breaking loose? Can, can you still just, Lord, I don't know how you're going to work it out, 
but to God be glory. Hallelujah. And I don't know how this is going. I don't know how this is going to come together. I just know that the Lord spoke. All I know is that he said it. And, and because sometimes we're always trying to prove stuff to people, we're worried about what people think. We're worried about how they're going to judge what they see because we're going through. And you know, I begin to think about how David, amen, was anointed king at 17 years old. Amen. Amen. As, as a young man being, being anointed as king while there was already a king, all right, sitting on the throne. Glory to God. And I believe it was like 15 years he ran from King Saul, waited 15 years. We can't wait a week. We can't wait a day for God to fulfill his word. We can't wait 24 hours for the will of God to come to pass. 15 years on the lamb. And all he had was a promise. He didn't have a, sta a stationary place that he could call home. And you know how we would do. Child, God ain't with him. Tuh. That ain't God. Look at him all over the place. And I thought that he was just anointed king. What kind of what spirit is that? You know how church folk do? You know how religious folks do? Because we don't understand the pattern of God and the process of God. And this is why you got to let God do what he want to do in you. And you got to stay at peace about it. You don't owe nobody no explanations. Can you hear me out there? You don't have to explain anything to anybody. Well, where is your children? Where is your money? Where is your job? I thought y'all had it going on. That's not your business. All you got to do is keep your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everybody always have something to say. But look at here. When God get finished. That's all you got to worry about. Hallelujah. While David prayed, while he still worshiped, while he still gave God glory, while he still lifted his hands, amen, hallelujah, and never said a, a word against his king, glory to God, and kept his heart right before the Lord, waiting because he knew that it was not man that ordered his steps, it was God. And if the anointing precedes, now listen to me, if the anointing precedes your positioning, that's all you need. That's all you need. You wait on God, the anointed. God already anointed you for what he called you to do. Just wait for him. He already anointed you, even though you're going through hell, even though you don't understand, even though you don't have all the answers. Be at peace. Be at peace. Don't let the enemy come in and harass you. And this is what you got to understand. And nowhere in this scripture does he say, rebuke the devil. Nowhere. Now, can I take you somewhere else just for a second? All right. Come on, go with me for a second. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to show you this. I'm running out of time and I'm, I'm intent to stay on time today. Let's go to Matthew. All right. Matthew, the sixth chapter. I'm going to read this to you because we get carried away. You know what I'm saying? And I love moving in the Holy Ghost. I love God speaking to us. I love speaking in tongues. I love all that. Amen. And those of you that's watching, amen. If you have not shared this video, please share this video. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Look at what it says. He says, therefore, and I'm still in the ESV. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. Why are you tripping? Did you create yourself? Listen. Did you, did you, did you, did you, did, what, did how, how were you born? Did, did you have anything with you being born? Did you have anything to do with your creation? Why are you tripping about your life? Why are you tripping about what you have and what you don't have? I need you to get the ministry of stop it. Come on here, somebody. The ministry of stop it. Stop worrying. Stop being anxious. Stop trying to prove something. That's the ministry of stop it. Because listen to me, when you're walking in God, you don't have anything to prove except what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's it. That's it. Come on here. Amen. Hallelujah. So he said, therefore, I'm telling this is Jesus talking. Before Paul got the message, here's Jesus giving the same thing. Therefore, I'm telling you, 
Do not be anxious about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more of, of more value than they? Do you not understand how valuable you are to God? Do you not understand what you mean to him? That he gave his life for you? Why are you worried about things that you can't even, they're out of your hands. You can't even put no hands to it. I'm not talking about the stuff that you have control over. God will allow you to be in circumstances that you don't have control over. He will allow you, amen, to be in the midst of stuff that you can't do anything about. And all you can do is trust it. All you can do is rest in him and not allow yourself to be harassed about your circumstances. Allow and not allow yourself, amen, to be troubled and encumbered in your thought life about what you can and cannot do. Come on here, somebody. Amen. I pray you catching this word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. All right. So verse, verse, amen, 27. He says, and which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? How, what are you going to add to yourself? What, what are you going to add to yourself by being worried? And being anxious. What, what can you do? Now, things that you have, amen, that you can, you can make changes to, you do your part. Pray. Seek the Lord. Do, be faithful. Okay? Do what God wants you to do. But don't try to take matters into your own hands. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He says, you cannot even, you can't add no time to your life by you being anxious. And he says, why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Hallelujah. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, be not anxious about anything, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you have need of them all. Don't be like the world. Getting out here trying to, you know what I'm saying? Trying to do what the world does. Getting, and there's nothing wrong with you having to grind. So let me, let me, let me balance this, this word, you know, while I'm saying this. Because, you know, we get on our grind and we think everything we get is going to be by our own effort. But when you're walking in the spirit, let me explain to you that you will, amen, as the scripture says, you will dwell in houses that you didn't build. How is that possible? Because it has nothing to do with you. You will, amen, drink from vines that you didn't plant. How is that possible? Because it doesn't have anything to do with you. And when you understand that God wants us to walk in the realm where it has nothing to do with your smarts, has nothing to do with your anointing, has nothing to do with who you know, it has nothing to do with, amen, amen, glory to God, how, what family you come from, amen, and who you connected to. God wants you to be able to understand, amen, that there's a work that he wants to do that only he can can do it but you got to stop worrying about it that's why you're in a situation that you can't fix yourself that's why circumstances are out of your hand that's why amen you can't change this yourself why because God wants to show you that this is his thing he got this he gonna do this not you not your anointed self. Thank God for your anointing. Hallelujah. Not, not, amen, not who you know. Not your friends. Not your money. Amen. Not, not your successful business. None of that. God said, I'm going to do this myself. What I got for you, I'm going to do it. Stop worrying about it. I got your kids. I got your husband. I got your wife. Stop worrying about it. You worry about whether or not you're going to be married. Stop worrying about whether you're going to be married. Just live for him. Let him send to you what he wants you to have. Stop worrying about what's going to happen on your job. Just be faithful. Just, just trust him. Just lean and depend on Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, don't do like the world does. He said, but 
Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. There is enough stuff waiting for you tomorrow, child. Why are you worried about tomorrow? You need to focus on standing in faith today. You need to focus on leaning and depending on God today. The power of trusting God, the power of the peace of God will keep you in harmony with not just other people around you, but in your own self. You got to learn how to be at peace in you. And that peace does not come when you allow yourself to be molested. Remember, being harassed by the enemy, by thoughts. By your circumstances, trying to figure out how you're going to work all these things out. It's not your responsibility to try to figure out how to work it out. Your responsibility is to trust God and to seek his kingdom first. Let God order those things that are his. Let God worry about those things that, amen, are his responsibility. You're not God. And because you're not God, you can't do what God can do. Because you're not God, you can't touch what God can touch. Because you're not God, you can't reach where God can reach. So what you got to learn how to do is stop letting yourself be harassed by what you have no control over. And walk in the peace of God. Amen. I'm running out of time. Glory to God. So let me, let's get to, to another verse. Let's go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, the power of the peace of God. There's power in the peace of God. There's power in resting in him. Hallelujah. You know, we sing songs, you know, um, um, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. And we be lying. We trust God as long as everything is going according to our plan. Mm-hmm. We trust God as long as everything, we can explain everything that we see. As long as, you know what I'm saying, it seems like everything is lining up. I got all my money. I got, I got good people around me. My house is at peace. My bills is all paid. Hallelujah. Me and my spouse is getting along. All my kids are doing what they're supposed to do. But what happens when all of those things, you know what I'm saying, all of those things get out of control, your control. What do you do, amen, when, when you're not getting along with your best friend? You're not getting along with your spouse. You're not getting along with your children. You're having difficulty on your job. What do you do? You can't walk around with an attitude. You got to walk in the peace of God, in the peace of God. Hallelujah. The scripture says for us not to be anxious about anything, anything, anything. Those things that you're weeping about in secret. Those things, amen, that had you sitting up at night. You know you go to bed at 8 o'clock and you can't sleep because now your mind is being harassed by your issues and your circumstances. God, what am I going to do? God, hallelujah, what am I, how am I going to work this out? Don't you know the scripture talks about men's hearts failing them for fear? Why? Because of what's coming on the face of the earth. Why? Because they don't have peace. And this is how, amen, the enemy is able to get in. He's able to get in when you are allowing your outward circumstances to dictate to you your inward peace. You cannot allow your outward circumstance Tell you whether or not you have rest in the Lord. You got to be at peace no matter what. No matter what you're facing. Your life is in God's hand. Remember we just read the verse of scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. That, amen. That God is the one who's in control. So you can't add no. You can't add a stature to yourself. You can't add another day to your life. By you worrying. Rest in the power of the peace of God. That's what you got to do. Rest in the power of the peace of God. Look here, John chapter 14. All right, let's go down to verse 27. Hallelujah. 
Let's start at 25. He says, these things I've spoken to you while I'm still with you. But the helper, Holy, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. How does the world give? The world gives and takes it back. How does the world give? The world gives based off of whether or not the world thinks you should have it. But God says, amen, I'm telling you, this is this right here is standard issue. The peace of God is standard issue. You don't have to do nothing extra to get it. Come on here, somebody. You don't have to do an extra dance to have the peace of God. You know, and sometimes because we are not at peace, because we don't have the peace of God operating and, you know, resident within us, what happens to us? We can't get along with other people. When you are at disharmony with yourself and, and inside, there's no peace. It makes you fight with other people. You'll start arguments. Come on. You will fuss with people. You can't get along with folks when you don't have peace. Because, because whenever there's no harmony, because this word peace means to be at unity with yourself. I'm not fighting myself. So if, if I'm not fight, if I, if I am in the state of fighting myself, then guess what happens to me? Then I start fighting other people. I start manifesting that outwardly. You can't, you can be anointed all you want to. You could be full of the Holy Ghost all you want to anointed people. But you better let the peace of God take control of you. You better let the peace of God. Listen to me. And, and this right here, I don't care if you are apostle, whoever. I don't care if you are prophet, somebody. We all have had to come to the place where we have made the decision that we are going to allow the peace of God to rule us from inside. Not worrying about what's going on around us. I don't care about how many open doors you have, boo-boo. Guess what? You still got to have the peace of God inside. You got to be able to experience the power of what you preach about the peace of God. And this is not just a message. This got to be a lifestyle for you. That you bring your thoughts into subjection. That you bring your inner man into subjection. This is why people have heart attacks. This is why people have high blood pressure. Saints of God. Anointed people. Why do you think you have high blood pressure, anxiety? There's no peace. Why do you think, amen, you got stomach uh, ulcers and, 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 and all kind of stuff. Your stomach acid eroding away, amen, at your organs inside because you have no peace. Blood pressure going sky high, out of control. You on three and four and five medications for your blood pressure. Not just because you eating bad. It might have something to do with your diet, but it's because you have no peace. Come on here, because you're not at peace inside. When you worry, when you, amen, are feeling that harassment, that pestering, amen, that aggression, and you start feeling that inside, come on here, somebody. You know it's the truth. You know it's the truth. You used to be able to just rest in God. You know, you know, you know how we say when we grow up and we become adults, we look at kids and be like, oh my God, I ought to be a child again. If I would have knew then what I know now, I would have held on to my youth. I would have held on to my childhood. Well, up to a certain point anyway. Praise God. You know, and, I, and we got to let this word work in us. You got to let this word work in you. You got to allow the peace of God to live in you, to take control of your mind. Stop sitting up late at night worrying about what you have no control over. Stop worrying about when is God going to do it. All you got to do is live for him. That's all you got to do. Live for him. Hallelujah. All right. Now listen. Okay, I need to skip from here, okay? Now, I need you to go with me real quick. This is my last verse of scripture because I'm really, really, really over time. Hallelujah. Let's go. I mean, this is my last verse, Luke chapter 11, all right? And I need you to see this real quick, and then we're going to pray. Luke chapter 11. Luke, the 11th chapter, amen, and I want to start at the 17th verse. 
Luke 11. I hope you're, I hope you're writing these verses down. Amen. Those of you that's watching, we got to stop faking. Can I just say that? Stop faking. Stop trying to put on for people. Stop trying to, you know what I'm saying? Well, I've got it all together. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Meanwhile, you at home crying by yourself. Meanwhile, you are worried. You are anxious. You are being harassed by the burdens of what you don't know and what you don't understand. Meanwhile, inside, you are experiencing the aggression of thoughts Hallelujah, that keep coming at you because you don't know how this is going to work. God, what are you doing? And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to read this verse. But I begin to think about Jesus in Gethsemane. <laughs> Hallelujah, when everything came crashing down, he knew what his assignment was. He knew what he came here to do. But the anxiety and the, and the worry about having to, okay, this is D-Day. This is down to the wire now. Come on here now. You know how you feel when you, well, okay, now this, uh, I've been worried about this day, you know, and the closer you get to your deadline for whatever's coming up, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 you might worry about it as you're coming up on it, but the day of. Maybe you got a court date. Maybe you have a, you know, a funeral you have to go to. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's surgery. Whatever it is, you know how you feel. Like when you come to that point, you know what I'm saying? Now, I've been thinking about it, but now I'm here. How do I handle this? Lord, because this is fear I'm dealing with. This is anxiety because I don't know how this is going to turn out. I don't know how this is going to come together. I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this. I mean, I know I got your word, but how am I going to make it out of this? Are you really going to bring me out? Are you really going to fix this? Are you really going to bring everything together? Because it doesn't look like it. Come on here. Hallelujah. And so you gotta, you gotta not allow that harassment. I rebuke that harassment today. Hallelujah. And those thoughts that are coming to you to try to prevent you from standing and living and walking in peace. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let me read this verse to you right here. All right. Luke chapter 11, verse 17. I pray y'all getting this word. I pray, amen, that you are allowing this word to wash you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And to charge your faith because God is not unjust. Whatever he has spoken, he is going to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Whatever he said. Luke chapter 11. All right. Verse 17. Hallelujah. And he says, but he, knowing their thoughts, and he's talking about those, amen, that were talking, amen, standing around, talking about Jesus is casting out the devil by the power of the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, but he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. Listen, 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 listen. You know how to say, listen to me, Linda. Listen. Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste waste is brought to ruin now remember i said to you that this peace is to be at harmony to be in unity with yourself this peace that jesus is talking about that i'm going to give to you amen you got to be in harmony with yourself and if you are not you're going to self-destruct if you're not at peace inside the lack of the peace of god inside leads people to suicide it leads people, amen, to sickness and all kinds of heart attacks and strokes and all kinds of stuff, alienating themselves in relationships because of stress, because of the lack of peace. You got to begin to see, take a, take a step back and look at how anxiety, amen, and your inability to trust God has been creating issues in your relationships because you don't trust God. Hallelujah. And he said, every kingdom divided against yourself. If you are divided against yourself, if you are not a unity in yourself, you're going to be brought to ruin. You're going to be brought to ruin. Now, I know we talk about spiritual kingdoms right here in the word, but I need you to understand the importance of having the power of the peace of God. This is urgent. This is an emergency. This is a 911 message. 
get back in the place of peace. Get back. And that place of peace is in prayer. That place of peace is in worship. That place of peace only comes from the power and the presence of God. You're not going to get it, amen, by listening to your favorite preacher. That's fleeting. It's going to go away. Because when you walk away from your favorite preacher, you still got to deal with your circumstances. You got to rest in God inside, knowing that what God has said, Whatever it is, if he said he's going to save your children, take, you can take it to the bank. Remember David again, 15 years running from Saul. Running in front of everybody. The same people that he had to lead, he was running. They could see it. They knew it. No doubt they were talking about him. Ain't that the same guy that, hey, did, didn't the prophet go to his house? I heard he was anointed. Why is he running? Mm. The prophet must have missed it. That must not be who God really going to use. Come on here, somebody. Y'all know how people do. And, and, and we shriek back. And the Bible says that, that, that David spent time in caves. David spent time, amen, hallelujah, out there on the run, hallelujah, waiting for God's word to come to pass. And, and that's prophetic to us that there's a wilderness that, 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 that precedes the fulfillment of the word of God. Can I say that again? There's a wilderness that after you receive the word of God, there's a wilderness, there's a cave experience that comes after you receive the promise because you got to get through that wilderness. You got to let God purge out of you everything that's not like him while you're waiting for him to, to move on your job, while you're waiting for him to open doors, while you're waiting for him to save your family, while you're waiting for him to move in your marriage, amen, and, and to do whatever it is or heal your body. Go through this wilderness, but know that God is the one that's doing the work. Know that, amen, just like he sent the word, he's going to perform the word. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Don't be divided in yourself. Rest in the power of the peace of God. Jesus said, my peace, not as the world gives, but my peace I'm giving to you. Let me finish this verse because I'm getting excited about the word. See, I'm going over. Pray for me. I'm going to get this word out. Amen. Verse 18. Well, let me finish 17. He says, but he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is laid to waste, and a divided house falls. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebub. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God, it has come unto you or come upon you. Now, pay attention to verse 21. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. When you stand on your guard, when you stand where you're supposed to, hallelujah, your goods are safe. When you stay in prayer, when you stay, amen, in the place of peace with God, everything stays in alignment. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But when one stronger than he attacks him, did I tell you about that harassing spirit? Did I tell you about that? That spirit that comes to molest, that comes to, amen, to pester you. Come on here. Hallelujah. That, that spirit that comes to annoy and burden you. Hallelujah. That's what he's talking about. He says, when one that is stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. This is how you lose your peace. Because you have come under attack. And this word attack means to succeed or to come against. So you've experienced things that have come against you. Amen. And the plan of the enemy has been to back you into a corner and to make you quit on God. And in some instances, it has been successful. Hallelujah. The, the, the attack you have experienced, amen, has been successful. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, and overcomes him. This word overcome means to conquer, to subdue, or to prevail. When you find yourself in a place where your circumstances are prevailing over you. When you find yourself being subdued and conquered by life. 
Conquered by what you can't control. Conquered, amen, by what other people say about you. Conquered and subdued and being prevailed upon by what other people, amen, have put out there about you. When you find yourself, amen, hallelujah, that the enemy seems like he is triumphing over you. And he seems like he's got the best of you. And it doesn't look like you're winning. You got to get back to the place of peace. Hallelujah. Because when you have been moved out of that place, that's the only time that that enemy has the ability to, to overcome you. When you are the strong man, Jesus has, well, I'll put it like this. Jesus is a strong man in you. You can't let anything come and bind Jesus in you. And even here, he's telling them about what goes on. Amen. And he's explaining to them that this is not by the power of the devil, that he's casting out devils. And he don't say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. He doesn't say, I bind you. He says, I'm trying to show you how this works. Because if you don't understand how this works, then you're going to continue to allow the enemy to harass you. So stop allowing the enemy to harass you. He said, my peace I give to you. My peace, I'm leaving it here and I am giving it to you. It is yours. Peace belongs to you. The state of being in harmony with others, within yourself, and with God. It belongs to you and you got to walk in it. You got to possess it and you have to refuse to give it up. It belongs to you. You have a strong man in you and his name is Jesus. And his whole Jesus whole mindset is for us to belong to him. His spirit on the inside of us, taking up residence, living in us. But you can't, by his spirit, he can't be a strong man in you if you don't empower him by staying in the word, by staying on your face, by staying in fellowship. So you got to, amen, take authority over these thoughts that have been harassing you, over life that has been harassing you, over things that are out of your control, that you've allowed it to worry you and stress you out and run up your blood pressure and give you ulcers and give you nervous stomach and have you run into the bathroom because you're sick on your stomach because, because you're worrying and not understanding that God wants you to walk in peace. God wants you to walk in peace. And when you can do that, when you can do that, when you walk in peace, I'm not telling you that you won't cry. I'm not telling you, amen, that you don't see those circumstances. I'm not telling you that it's not going to hurt. I'm not telling you that it's not going to affect you at all. But I'm telling you that inside, you at unity with yourself and with God. And you know that even though I might have tears streaming down, and even though I might be hurting right now, his peace he has given to me. His strength I am resting in. And I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to be anxious about anything. Even though it seems like the enemy has succeeded, I already know that the scripture tells me that I am more than a conqueror. And even though it may not look like, excuse me, that I have conquered anything, I'm not caught up in what it looks like. Hallelujah. Because I'm looking into eternity. And what I see in eternity is I have already won. Jesus has made me the victor, not the victim. Let's pray. Father, I pray for your people today, God, that are watching this video or listening. God, I pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch their hearts, that you would cause them to be strengthened with might in their inner man. God, we come against right now every spirit of the enemy that will come to steal their peace, that will cause them to walk in anxiety and fear fear and apprehension. Lord, we thank you that the peace of God that passes all our understanding, it belongs to us. And you said you will cause it to guard our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus. Help us to do what your word commands us to do, which is for us to come to you and to trust you and to give you every request and all of our supplications that we will make them known to you and that we will give you thanks knowing that your peace is going to reside in us and on us. 
We come against anxiety. We come against fear. We come against all these things that will come to harass us and molest us in our minds. And we declare and decree today that the peace of God rests upon us, that we walk in peace, that we live in peace, that we are at peace with those that we live with, that we are at peace right now, God, on our jobs, with our loved ones, in our homes, wherever we go, we command the peace of God to follow us and to reside in us. And we thank you, Lord, that we will allow that peace to rest in us. We come against sleepless nights. We come against every spirit of worry. We come against everything that, 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 that the enemy has come and lied to us and even thoughts that we've had in our own self, thinking that you weren't going to do what you said you was going to do, thinking that you weren't going to heal, thinking that you weren't going to save, thinking that you weren't going to make the way. We rebuke those thoughts today in the name of Jesus. And we thank Thank you, Lord, that we can roll our works on you. We thank you, Lord, that today we can rest in you. We thank you, Lord, that our trust and our faith is in Jesus and not in man. And we just give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. And we bless your name for it right now. We give you glory, oh God. And we thank you that it is so and so it is in Jesus' name name. Amen. Hallelujah. And amen. We thank God today for the word. And listen, if you've been watching, amen. Thank you so much, my sister. I'm so glad that you Amen. Joined us today. Amen. And I pray that this word encourages you. Amen. And if you got to go back and listen to it again, go listen again. Don't you let anything rob you of the place of peace. That peace belongs to you because Jesus said so. He said so. And because Jesus said it, we can rest in it. Listen, by way of announcement, all right, Wednesday, Wednesday morning, all right, for the month of May, okay, unless we're on the road, all right, Wednesdays for the month of May and Fridays for the month of May, Wednesday mornings at 5 o'clock. I know that's early. Some of y'all are central time. It's 4 o'clock central time. But you can make this sacrifice. So that you can get in prayer. Amen. The Lord was telling me about being in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're on central time, join us in prayer. Get up out your bed. Amen. You are fighting uncommon situations and circumstances. And in order for you to win, you're going to have to do something you've never done before. It's called pray more. Amen. So we're going to pray together Wednesdays at 5 a.m. for the month of May. And Fridays for the month of May at midnight. Fridays at midnight and Wednesdays at 5 a.m. Fridays at midnight, Wednesdays at 5 a.m. Yes, it's early, but listen to me. <laughs> the enemy is not sleeping on you. You better get up out that bed and pray. You better get up out that bed and pray. You got, you got circumstances that you are dealing with that you can't just, Father, in Jesus' name, we just ask you to do it. Listen, listen to me. You're going to you have to bombard heaven. And get in prayer. And break some barriers. Amen. Destroy some yokes. Hallelujah. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to get in prayer. Make the sacrifice. You that's on the East Coast, make the sacrifice. You get up and you go to your job. You on time for your job. Let's get in prayer. Let's, let's get it. If you serious about what God, amen, about getting a hold of God. If you serious about doing what God has called you to do. Let's get in this prayer. Wednesdays, 5 a.m. Fridays at 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time. If you are on the East Coast, that's the regular. That's my time is your time. If you are Central Time, that will be 11 p.m. Central Time on Fridays and 4 a.m. Central Time on Wednesdays. If you are on the West Coast, Pacific Standard Time, I believe that's 2 o'clock. Um, um, midnight is going to be 10 p.m. 9 p.m., 9, 10, 11, 12, 9 p.m. on Fridays, Pacific time, and, and 2 a.m. on uh, Wednesdays uh, is Pacific time, all right? So 2 a.m. On, on, on Wednesdays, if you're Pacific time, and uh, 9, p, 9 p.m. On, on Fridays, and then on the East Coast, it is 12 Friday nights and 5 a.m. Wednesdays. Central time, 4 a.m. Wednesday, and 11 p.m. Wednesdays. So I just gave you all the time frames. Don't say you don't know what it is because you know what it is. I just gave it to you. 
All right. So we thank God for all of you. The website is up on this page. I'll make sure that we put the website up on the other page here. Amen. If you want to sow seed, amen, into Soda and Global, you can. S-O-D-A-A-N-G-L-O-B-A-L dot O-R-G. Amen. You can sow your seed into the ministry. Amen. If the Lord has blessed you, amen, on today or if ever, if you want to be blessed by resources that we have on our website, feel free, amen, to go ahead and um, so, amen, and, and find something that's going to be a blessing to you. Amen. Yes, thank you so much, Elder Bradley, for putting the number up. The number for the prayer, and I'm going to put the flyers up because I have them. Um, the numbers for the prayer, 218-895-4787, and the access code is 7873. God bless you. The Lord be with you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Be strengthened, be encouraged, and I went way over time, but there was just too much word. We had to get that word out. All right. Love y'all much. Have a blessed Sunday, and Walk in the peace of God. Walk in the power of the peace of God. God bless you.